Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, before I get started on my teaching today, I want to uh, make a slight correction. Yesterday, when I was talking about that, I had been studying diet, and my first teaching that I did on March 7, 19 was on 9, 20 of 18. Well, within a month, because I'd already been studying this for uh, a few months, okay, maybe three to six months, uh, Holy Spirit had been showing me the reason people are so sick and they can't get well is because they are still consuming the thing that was making them sick, okay? So look, if, if I'm eating something that's making me sick, I can get healed for a little while, that supernatural move of God. But if I don't stop putting in my body what got me sick to begin with, now I'm right back at the pool of Bethesda where Jesus tells the man, oh, I see you're healthy now. Go and stop doing what you were doing unless you end up worse than you were before you were healed. Okay, so when we keep putting the wrong things in our bodies, our body is going to get sick again. And God taught me that, okay? So within uh, that little short time of September the 20th of 2018, within one month of all of this revelation that God had been teaching me came together, I quit eating animal meat, the meat itself. And I became a vegetarian in October 2018. And then in the video, what I said is in December of 2019, I said I became a vegetarian, and I was already a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian in October 2018. I became a vegan, which is a plant-based only, in December 2019. Uh, now, vegan basically means you don't take in any animal products at all, whether it's meat of any animal, anything that's living and breathing. I like the way the guy says it in the video. If it has a mama and a daddy and it's got eyeballs and it breathes or and it eats and poops, I don't eat it, okay? And so, no, uh, and you don't take in any eggs, cheese, or milk, any byproducts from any animals. That's what the word vegan means, okay? So, and I wanna make sure I say this, okay? Uh, if I could go back, I would jump straight in to going solely plant-based, vegan, and not do vegetarian. And here's the reason. Meat causes long-term, slow decline in health. Your organs, okay, uh, your heart, your stomach, that's why people are diabetics, all that long-term intake of meat, uh, all of the hardening of the arteries, things like that, that is long-term meat eating. Here's the thing about uh, the milk, eggs, and cheese, okay, including eggs, by the way, uh, that causes more of an immediate uh, problem in our health, such as digestive issues, diarrhea, or even uh, lack of being able to go to the bathroom, uh, Crohn's, all kinds of, of things that go on. Those are caused more through the uh, intake of the byproducts, milk, eggs, and cheese. Let me, can I give you a quick example? I love, I, this makes so much more sense to me on this side of understanding what God's good and perfect will is for mankind was stated in Genesis 129, okay? You go through McDonald's and you order a breakfast sandwich. Watch what happened. You want like a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit or whatever. You've got a dead animal, bacon, You've got an egg, and you've got cheese, okay? And then sometimes even the bread has milk in it, okay? So we're getting all of those animal products in one sandwich, and you ain't getting any fruit, which is what your body needs, okay? You're not getting any vegetables, okay, unless you order some tater tots that are fried in grease that a dead animal was fried in. So you're getting, uh, you're even getting some bad stuff in the french fries or tater tots or hash browns that you're eating if it's been fried in the grease where other animal products have been cooked. But anyway, I think I've made my point on that. But I just wanted to make sure I corrected myself because uh, as far as being vegetarian and then going vegan. But I would, the best impact you're ever going to have is to jump in and go completely plant-based and abandon everything. A guy was writing me and he said, it's kind of like smoking. You know, you, you don't want to cut back. You want to just stop, right? Uh, you, who wants to cut back being an alcoholic? They want to just completely stop, right? 
same thing applies here. Uh, so now let me, uh, today what I've laid out is uh, yesterday, as I closed my video, I made a closing statement. And I want to pick up on that and talk about what I meant by that last statement. I said, God wants every believer to walk in divine health, to walk in and live in divine health. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't want every human being to be healthy and well, because he does. But why does he want believers of all people in the earth for us to walk in divine health? And I'm going to talk about that today. Let's go back to Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He also said that he was the light of the world. And then he tells us that we are the light of the world. Remember, I got salt and light. We are the salt and the light of the world. And we're representing him here in the earth. Okay, so now we are supposed to be the living examples to the world of what it looks like to be in a different kingdom. We've translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And people should be able to look at us and see what's different about us. Okay? We aren't supposed to be like the world, following the world, and the ways of the world. We are so supposed to be set apart and different. And I do not, and I'm, this is going to hurt some feelings today, but I do not see the church in America overall looking and acting and living being different than the rest of the world in a lot of different ways. And we're not an example to the world, okay? And I wrote some more notes, so I'm going to keep going here, okay? Uh, I talked about us living from healing to healing uh, instead of walking in divine health. And here's the thing. It, okay, it seems to me that the church is following the way of the world. We are just as sick. We have just as many medications. We're just as challenged to control our weight and our appetite uh, and be a healthy weight for our size and our age as the rest of the world. See, the world does not see us as being different or separate. When we get sick, we have to go to the doctor. When we get, we get, we get cancer treatments, we have open heart surgery. What if we were actually living according to Genesis 129 and it was rare, like I love Andrew Womack's uh, statement, he'll say it's rare as hen's teeth. Did you know, what if it was rare as hen's teeth that a Christian actually was sick with a disease like heart disease or cancer or that they were diabetics or that they were overweight. What if the world could look at us as believers and go, man, what's different about those people? That's what I'm talking about. What if we were the ones that showed the world what it looked like to live out and walk in the kingdom of light, the kingdom of knowledge, the kingdom of, of showing them uh, the way to living a full, abundant life now, right here in the nasty now and now. And uh, I've always talked about this, how that we are sons and daughters of God, and we're supposed to be walking in the kingdom of God right here, right now, in the nasty now and now. And see, that's still just as true as when I started doing Facebook teachings four years ago. My understanding is a lot deeper now because now I understand that Jesus didn't come to set us free from the law and all of the junk that they were permitted to do under the law he came to fulfill the law and set it aside so we could go back to Genesis 1 being seen where in the, uh, the condition and position that God created us to be, sons and daughters seen as sinless through the Father, through Jesus, right? But here's the thing. He also, un, he was the undoing of Adam as far as sin and all of that, but he's also the undoing of all fallen thinking as far as anything that has to do with the kingdom of darkness and the fall. Uh, I want to take you, let me see if I've got some more notes here. Uh, this is so important that we talk about this because, see, right now, we have believed religious lies that we've been taught, 
But what if we went back to living the way that God created us to live in Genesis 1.29, and I'm going to read it to you right now. This is in the expanded Bible. It says, And God said, Look, I have given you all the plants that have grain for seed on the face of the earth, and all the trees whose fruits have seed in them. They will be food for you. Did you know that God did not create us to eat animals? His best perfect will for all of human beings is for us to eat fruits and vegetables. He created us. I love to put it like this, and I told this to my friend Ralph on a comment yesterday. God created our bodies. He's like General Motors or Ford Motor Company. They created that engine to run off petroleum gasoline, right? But we decide, oh, well, you know, I'm the owner of the vehicle. I can do what I want to with the vehicle. It doesn't matter what the maker of the vehicle tells me. You know what I'll do? I'll just blend me some diesel in with that gasoline. And guess what? The more diesel I put in that gasoline, the worse that car's going to drive. And before long, I'm going to lock the motor up. I'm going to get left on the side of the road because now I have gone completely against what the manufacturer created that vehicle to run off of. That's what it's like with us and our bodies. We are blending things into, and actually it's worse than that, we're not even blending our fruits and vegetables and adding a little bit of other stuff to it. Oh no, we have totally flipped it over, and now what we're doing is eating right the opposite of what God created our bodies to operate the maximum best use of our bodies and what it needs to have the energy and the health that we need. Instead, we've taken the fruits and vegetables and pushed them aside, and it's rare that we have any fruits and vegetables really, right? And now we're just putting junk in our bodies that doesn't belong there, and that, my friends, is why we as Christians aren't any different from the rest of the United States of America population. We're just as sick, we're just as overweight, we're on just as many medications, and they do not see us as being set apart or any different because we're really not, are we? And that's what I'm proposing to you. What if we've just been misled over the years, because I'm going to say it again in this video, for the first 400 years, Christians were taught to be vegetarians. And back then, there wasn't a lot of cheese, eggs, and milk running around either, okay? So vegetarian meant basically eating fruits and vegetables. Most of the church leaders for 400 years after Jesus ate fruits and vegetables, not dead animals. And they wouldn't let people be part of the congregation unless they uh, were vegetarians, okay? And y'all can go and check that out. Guys, I've spent uh, getting up here close to two years now studying these things. But here's what I want to talk about a little bit now, okay? You know, uh, what if instead of us, and I brought this up yesterday about us going from healing to healing and sickness to sickness, and we got to pray and beg God to heal us or find that person that's got that faith to get us healed. What if, just what if, if we would go back to Genesis 129 and put in our bodies what our Creator built our bodies and we practice preventative where we could walk in divine health and not need a miracle, we don't need to go to a doctor, we don't need insulin, we don't need heart pills or blood pressure medicines. What if we live preventively so we don't get sick right? Walked in divine health. Instead of living like the world and us consuming all of these animals and animal byproducts where we're in a reactive state of, oh, I got to go on a diet to lose 20 pounds. Oh, I got to go to the doctor because I got high blood pressure or all of that. What if, what if the answer has always been right here in front of us in Genesis and we just have not been taught the truth that when God says something, he means it. And he is not double-minded that he would change his mind. No, he told us what he wanted us to eat from the beginning. We're the ones that changed our minds, and God has had to work with and through that decision. Okay, guys? Listen, I'm going to hop off here. I love you, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Okay? Bye-bye.